This week's tailgate conversation is presented by Pinnegar Chevrolet. For today's tailgate conversations, I want to introduce you to a man you probably know for his most recent role. But let's get to know the farmer. I think one of the turning points really in my, in my life was when I went in the Army. Uh, you know, I did that at 19 years old and uh, thought so young. Uh, <laughs> it seemed like a long time ago. Of course, I was in law enforcement when I was in the Army. I was in the MPs. And uh, so when I come back uh, out of the military, I'd had a lot of training with the FBI, the Department of Justice, uh, and I threw, threw a lot of things in six years' time. And I come back and I went to work at a local sheriff's office and then started buying some gas stations, went into my own business, started buying cows and, and getting back into that mm -hmm. farm style of it. And the sheriff decided he was going to retire and he came down and asked me if I was interested in what if I would be sheriff. And I thought, you know, uh, I've got all this experience. I've got all this training. Mm -hmm. It's something I really enjoyed doing. So that's kind of how it all started. Our now governor's next stop was our state capitol. First as Missouri 133rd District House of Representative, then as Missouri's 28th District State Senator. Later, he is elected our Lieutenant Governor. And of course, you now know him as our 57th governor. But on those rare free moments, the farm is where he's at. So governor, you're representing the state of Missouri, but you also are representing agriculture. Take me through the role agriculture's played in your entire life. Oh my, well, well, I have to first, I started out, you know, when I grew up on a farm, so that was the only way I knew. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, in a little town uh, where I come from in Wheatland, and. Uh, my mom and dad were farmers, my grandparents were farmers, and uh, just I want to say the real McCoy farmers back then. You know, you milked cows, you had hogs, you had chickens, big garden, and that's really the way people survive, and that's how we grew up as, as kids. And, and some of the things I know, the, the values I learned on a farm was, uh, you know, about neighborly, about helping your neighbors, uh, and about seeing each other and kind of helping one another when people needed help. And uh, sometimes I miss those days. Uh, it was a simpler time back then, but, uh, you know, I grew up with those values on the farm that uh, I believe family values were always really important back then. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, to be able to experience the things I got to experience uh, growing up on that farm, I think helps me every day. Farming's changed a lot, you know, moving us forward in, into the 21st century. You know, where do you see the role of agriculture and technology and how they'll mesh together coming? Yeah, agriculture will have to, uh, is going to have to deal with technology and technology will be the future of agriculture just to meet the demands. and. Uh, I told a group of people just a week or so ago, I said, you know, it would be nice sometimes to farm like my grandpa did or my dad and mom, but you just, the reality of it is you can't anymore. We gotta be better stewards of the land. We gotta be better stewards of the livestock and row crop, it's just all changing and technology's playing such an important role in it. And when you, when, I just think when you get into equipment anymore, uh, me and my son was baling hay last week, and you mm -hmm. look at digital monitors in the tractors, and the tractors anymore is all digital, uh, and, and that's just where we're going from the old days. Uh, basically, when I grew up on a little old tractor, they just had a gear shift and a throttle, and, and you took off, you uh -huh. know, but today it's a lot different. So, But it's a good thing, too. I, I think it'll make us better, and uh, and I think you're going to see farmers really, I think farmers perform much at a much higher level now than what they did years ago, too, just trying to make sure the crops are good make sure the livestock's better. Uh, so uh, farming's changes, but it's going to continue to change, you know, and we just got to kind of deal with that, and I think it's really going to change for the better, though. I, I think it was really important for me and for my kids to understand the work ethic. Uh, it's, it's hard work to be successful. Uh, you know, nobody gives you anything in, in this whole world, and uh, if you work hard uh, and you have the right values, then I truly believe you can do anything you want to do. I, I tell my grandkids all the time that all things are possible if you have the will to try it and the faith to believe you can. So, Governor, you talk about instilling those, um, those skill sets into your kids. How do you take that same philosophy and put it into practice when you're leading our state? Fundamentally, there's three things that, that I really believe in. One, one's faith. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to be able to be a leader, I think you have to have faith. Mm -hmm. uh, two is core values. And, and three is I just love this state and I love this country. So uh, those things come pretty natural for me. But when you ask me how does growing up on a farm, how does living the lifestyle I lived over the years help me be governor? I think it's the work ethic uh, for number one. I, I think, uh, you know, everything's been, you know, I've had to work hard for everything I've ever had. And, and I think the other thing is, is all those values I've learned over the years, just treating people fairly, try, trying to make sure that you really do help someone because that's what a public servant does. 
And to be able to make sure that I provide that opportunity for those next generations is what drives me every day. It's what, it's what drove my parents, you know? You know, every day you want to think, is this kid going to get the opportunities that I've had? And, and what they do with those opportunities, I don't know. But I know as governor, I want to provide those opportunities for them. With our governor's love for faith, country, and agriculture, there is no question his heart is full.